Hey YouTube, Brandon here with Nixon Reptiles. Today I want to go over a video in regards to genetic testing and some of the results that we've found out, as well as the benefits and how you can use it to make the most out of your collection. As of March 2023, you can order tests both through Morph Market as well as Clutch, and currently you can test for Pied, Clown, Candy Albino, as well as Yellow Belly complex animals such as Yellow Belly, Spark, Asphalt, and gravel. You used to be able to test for Ultramo, and I'm not quite sure what's going on with that, and I'm going to have to look into that as well. Using genetic testing, you can make informed decisions on whether or not you're going to keep or sell an animal, as well as influence what pairings you shoot for within the season. It's extremely beneficial in the sense that you can market animals for exactly what they are, whether they are actually het or not het and then you can assign an appropriate value to those animals instead of that weird in-between arbitrary value between a non-het and a het that these possible hets seem to kind of fall into. That obviously benefits you both as the seller as well as the buyer because instead of taking that gamble, they can either pay for something that is a 100% het or and pay the reasonable asking price or they can get a non-het animal. Now that is a little bit of a disadvantage for people that are potentially buying a possible het and hoping for the come up. And they can still do that if a breeder does not want to test the animal, they can purchase that animal as a possible het and pay the $65 to have it tested for that gene and then save themselves a lot of time raising that animal up if it in fact does not prove out. So first off, we have babies from our leopard clown, het pied that was bred to a lavender het pied female. Now we only got two females to test from this clutch and here are the results. All right, so here is the first female. She is a leopard double het lavender clown. She did not prove out to be het for pied. Still a really awesome pattern and leopard really bringing in those really rich blacks. beautiful girl and now that she has proven to be not het for pied she can be sold accurately for what she is really nice looking girl here is her sister now she is also a leopard except she proved het for pied so she is a leopard triple het for lavender clown pied which i guess goes by the holy grail Again, really rich blacks, really deep pattern. I wouldn't have necessarily thought that she would have been het for pied based off of any markers. Ooh, trying to get the finger. Based off of any markers, she doesn't really have so much for tracks, but she is a really pretty animal and apparently decided to have an attitude today. So, gotta be quicker than that. Anyways, here she is. A leopard triple het for lavender clown pied. And using the same male, the leopard clown het pied, we bred him to an ultra male that was possible het pied. Now we didn't end up producing any pieds, so I imagine the female is also not het for pied. However, we did end up with four females to test, and these are the results. So here, once she chills out a little, we have a double het ultra male clown. And again, that is because she did not prove out het for pied. She has really awesome color though. I feel like that's something that Ultramel does. It really brightens these things up and almost has some sort of, I don't know, I don't know if it's marker or het influence or whatever, but just the color that's on this girl, it's really awesome. She's super bright, super vibrant. Really nice looking girl. Here we have the other double het ultra male clown. Again, this one did not prove out het for pied. She does, however, have the same very bright and orange markings. Really nice overall pattern and color. Again, I think it might just be the influence of the het ultra male, kind of peeking through, giving you a little glimpse of the greatness to come. Nice and gold, really rich, saturated color, and then really deep blacks. 
Now this one I will be holding back. This one is a leopard triple het ultramel clown pied, which is just going to be amazing. I mean, that's pretty much all it comes down to. Really unique pattern, really thick, really blocky, really deep blacks. Leopard does so much and it's so underutilized to a degree. Either way, I really like the look of this female and I am glad that, uh, that she proved out to be het for pied. Works out great for me. Again, the richness and the color. Here we have another leopard, also proven triple het, ultramel clown pied. Again, another hold back. Same as the last female, super unique pattern. Lots of striping, which is what's very common in leopards that are het for pied. But just beautiful color, beautiful pattern. Can't wait to see this. Even an ultra mellow would be awesome, but throwing pied in there definitely doesn't hurt. A little close up. Now, as I'm sure you could imagine, the two normals that proved to be double het for Ultramel Clown, I am going to be letting go. And the leopards that are now triple het for Ultramel Clown Pied, I do plan on keeping those as they're going to be a huge asset going forward. And leopard just adds so much contrast. Now this next one, I was really hoping for some good news on, and unfortunately it's not the case. We bred our sunset male to a het candy female, and we ended up pretty female heavy. However, the animals we sent sheds in for, none of them proved out het for candy. And one of them we need to resend. So hopefully she comes back as a double het for sunset candy. I do still have, I think, two males and another female or two that I need to send in sheds for. So I'm really looking forward to at least having a pair of double het sunset candies to try and put together. Because if you've seen the sunset lavender, you know the sunset candy should look equally amazing. So here's one of the het sunsets that proved not het for candy. So this is one of, I think, four or five female het sunsets that we now have available, as they did not prove het for candy. Still really awesome, good color and good size on them so far. I have noticed that some of the het sunset stuff does seem to be a little bit more reduced, which is kind of interesting, but overall still some really cool females to potentially get in your racks if you're interested in pursuing the sunset project. Another pairing using the Leopard Clown Het Pied. We bred him to a Lesser Fire Banana Het Clown Female, and the babies looked amazing. I couldn't be happier with how they turned out. We have only sent in two of those sheds out of the three females we produced from that clutch, and let's get into the results. So the Banana Het is currently going into shed, so the only one I really have to show you is the Fire Banana Leopard Clown that proved Het for Pied. Her sister, the non-fire version, um, I still have to send in a shed for her. Um, she just has a little bit more contrast and a little bit more orange. The fire does kind of mute that color a little bit, but she's still a really cool looking animal. I really like her look too. Just a little close up, show some of that kind of interesting kind of leopard Gotham pattern that she has going on. And then of course, the cool clown heads. Really beautiful animal. And if she doesn't go anywhere, I definitely don't mind keeping her because clown pieds, well, they look amazing. Banana looks amazing, so really cool. Turn around for, turn around for the people. Oh, now she's being shy. Also really like kind of the spotting that happens within the uh, leopard clown stuff. It's just a really cool look. As you can imagine, both of those females turning out het pied works out greatly within our favor. If they don't end up going, it's not gonna hurt my feelings any because they're exceptionally beautiful animals. If you made it this far, I greatly appreciate you watching this video. We also picked up some animals with the intent on testing them, knowing that genetic testing was going to be available for het clown. So we picked up two female 
genetic stripes that were possible for pied for a pretty reasonable price. We sent in the sheds for both of those females and we have the results. So right here, we have the leopard genetic stripe that proved het for clown. I guess with uh, genetic stripe, leopard basically just kind of really makes these blacks darker, as well as gives a little bit more kind of side coloration down here. But overall, she's got really solid stripes, and I really do like that. I think the genetic stripe clown project has a lot of potential. I think the color and the pattern variances that it gives are really cool. However, what's really interesting is what the Krypton genetic stripes look like. I think they have a little bit more variability, gives you a little bit more side pattern, so it really kind of opens up some options for you. So that's kind of the route that I'm going to be going with the genetic stripe clown slash cryptic project. Now here we have the genetic stripe that proved not to be het for clown. So she's also in shed, otherwise I usually wouldn't show her. But I also don't have a video to show her for uh, Morph Market, so here she is. Really cool eyes when they're in shed. Super rich pattern, also leopard genetic stripe that is now proven not have for a clown. Again, just like her sister, really full connected stripe, no breaks. I really like when they have that that full pattern, that full connectivity throughout. So there she is. As you can imagine, I am going to be keeping the female that proved het for a clown, and I'm going to be letting go of the female that proved not het for a clown. And this is huge because it now saves me two years, three years worth of feeding this female, getting her up, only to not get clowns whenever I breed her. And lastly, we have a black pastel red stripe yellow belly that was possible double het for Ultramel Clown that we picked up from Justin over at Canova, as I'm sure he was trying to go for an Ultramel Pompeii. And this male looks amazing all on his own. However, we did send in the shed. So he ended up testing positive for Clown, however, was negative for Ultramel. And with Ultramel being removed from Morph Market's list, it does have me a little curious and I'm going to inquire about that if he will be getting retested once they sort out whatever they're sorting out with their test. Regardless of his test results, I do plan on pairing him with our Orange Dream Ultramel Cryptic Pinstripe female, as I really like the look of the Krypton, and I think the Krypton version of the Pompeii looks better than the actual Pompeii with Clown. And with this pairing, I would produce Krypton, Black Pastel, Red Stripe, Yellow Belly, Orange Dream, pinstripes, which the pinstripe I could care less if I hit or miss on that, although the pin pay does look pretty amazing. And this would also secondarily prove him out to be het for Ultramel if there is some sort of issue with that test. And last but certainly not least, the Black Pastel Yellow Belly Red Stripe Het Clown that proved not het Ultramel, although as I mentioned we're going to be looking into that. Regardless of that, he has such a cool look, really great color, and, you know, just so much potential. I do plan on, like I said, taking this male into the Cryptic and Krypton projects because those as adults just look amazing. As you can see, he's got a lot of great color, lots of rusty reds and stuff kind of coming through, and I really like kind of the pattern abnormalities that kind of happen here. I do often wonder if he has spot nose in there, but I didn't get him as a spot nose, so only one way to find out. I highly doubt Justin was incorrect in his, uh, his labeling, but I certainly wouldn't be mad about a free gene. So here he is, the black pastel, yellow belly, red stripe, het clown. A little close up to show the color there. Really nice. So let me know down below if you have sent in shed, what your experience was like. Did you get good results? Did you get bad results? How do you feel about it going forward? And also let me know if you have any questions or anything else you would like me to cover in a future video. Some of the animals seen in this video are going to be added to our morph market. 
If you're interested in checking any of those out that fit into your projects, the link is in the description. Again, your time is valuable, and I appreciate you taking that time to watch this video. See you in the next one.